Welcome back. You're watching Business Morning live on Channel Television. Now to our next uh, conversation. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, uh, the construction and real estate uh, sectors contributed 20 trillion and are in the first three quarters of 2022. While construction services and 12.9 trillion are real estate uh, uh, contributed uh, 7 trillion are to the GDP. Quite impressive data compared you know, to 2021. Let's uh, get more now from engineer uh, Yuleke Ajiboye, CEO, Efficacy Construction. Join us right here in the studio. Uh, great to have you. Uh, you Happy New Year. Mm, same to you. Uh, uh, quite an impressive data. Mm. We're getting to the uh, GDP contribution from the construction and the real, estate. real estate for 2022. But it's quite interesting because that was a year we had, you know, high inflation, and the central bankers, you know, went crazy on ra mm. raising rates mm -hmm. globally. Mm -hmm. And yet we have that. How, how do you see it? What's your experience there? Well, for me, I, I honestly think um, because there's been a large deficit over the years for infrastructure, for construction. So there's still a huge gap to be bridged. So there's still going to be housing deficits. We have over about 27 trillion of housing deficit or there about more than that. And then we still have a lot of infrastructure deficit. So going on, we still expect to have more contribution to the GDP from the real estate and construction sector. Despite the challenges of um, 2022, you also know that there's a lot of activities still going on. And these activities are basically pushed from the residential perspective of construction. Because you know you have the residential, we have the commercial, and then you have the infrastructure. Infrastructure is mostly financed by the government. And then, but when you look at every man, every average family wants to own a property, so the, the drive for construction is still very much there, but as much as possible. Even as we're adding to the GDP, it does not also translate to profitability. When it comes to the indices you just mentioned, from inflation to hiking prices to recession, global recession and all of that. So yes, the GDP is there, but it doesn't also translate to profitability. So tell me, tell me about you know the, the challenges in, in your sector. Yeah. Well, in 2022, I think the challenges started from something around February, when diesel price went up. I never knew that diesel had so much impact on the construction that much, until when the price went up to about 200, we were shouting. Then April got to about 400. Now it's about 800 naira per liter. You know, right from the construction site, your excavator uses a diesel. So an excavator that uses 100 liters per day averagely, before it was 20,000 naira to fuel that machine to work for a couple of hours. Now it's now 100 times 80. So from 20,000 to 80,000. So you have a payloader, excavator, bulldozer on a construction site. So right on the site, your labor cost, operational cost has gone up. Now break it down to people that do um, sand. For every construction, you have the basic reinforcement components, sand, granite, cement, and the rest. So dredging sites, they use diesel to dredge, to operate their dredgers. So when diesel to became 800 from 200, that means the, sand of, the price of sand went up. The trucks that transport the sand also use diesel. So you see how it impacts the pricing and everything. So prices of materials just went up. Prices of delivering housing units, delivering construction projects went over the roof. The same thing to quarry, the same thing to logistics. And sadly, we had a couple of um, power grid failure last year. So most of the manufacturing companies that were producing iron rods, steel rods, cables, also had to now start using alternative source of energy generator depending on diesel. So virtually every part of it was affected. And then also, I also learned somewhere that now ships now use diesel as against HFO that the heavy fuels they use. So as a result, shipping costs also went up. So even importing some things is now a disadvantage. So all these ones even contributed more than the currency inflation challenges we're thinking, oh, dollar going up. So those ones were not much as worse as the ones we experienced. So the, the, the real issue was energy. It was energy. Basically for, Basically. for, that, for your sector. Or how, how did all of this uh, play into you know, pricing? Talking about the housing mm -hmm. industry, how did this play into you know, pricing you know, of your deliveries? Well, you see, Nigeria now, over the years, there's a very, the, the middle market is beginning to shrink seriously. So, you know, um, you want to play in the lower affordable range, or you are doing the big boys, the 5% of the 5% or 1% of the 1%. Right. So, but when you look at the 
middle income to the low income earners, housing, affordable housing model that you want to do, it's almost as if there's nothing affordable again. Because the houses you want to, before you want to deliver at 15 million, maybe an apartment, now you deliver it with nothing less than 25 million again. It's pushing prices up. You're also reducing the, the people that can assess those prices. So at the same time, so as the price is going up, it's really not an advantage for players in the industry because your market segment is shrinking. The people that can afford what you are servicing, what you are providing is beginning to reduce gradually. And um, last year, I think we had a couple of people that took advantage of the exchange. So we had a couple of people abroad investing in the Nigerian real estate construction sector, which was a boost. But at the same time, there's an extent to it. Now, when there's, the, when there's a global economy, as IMF has said, that means over there too, they have going to be faces of challenges over there. That means it will further affect the construction. So we have to still think around the box and see how it works. Definitely, the housing sector globally got, you know, hit in, in 2022. Got, and yes. obviously, you know, talking about, you know, building materials, mm -hmm. how much did the Ukraine, uh, the Russia-Ukraine war, how much did they play into that? Okay, I will use... Um, our own, our own ex, my own experience, personal experience when it comes to importation. Apart from the challenge we had from energy, you know, because um, the Ukraine crisis created a couple of recession across nations. America, things have gone expensive. Walmart, go to the UK, two things have gone expensive. And so when we look at the housing market in Nigeria, we are also expecting some diaspora remittances to contribute to the housing industry through investment, through purchases, when they are not over there stable financially, that's going to impact us here. And then so when you also look, okay, I was in Turkey to buy some materials recently. When I go to Turkey, they were struggling between their dollars and their lira with the inflation they were battling. So most of them are saying, we don't want to collect dollars, we want to collect lira. So I make a purchase now, in two days time, they tell me the price has changed because dollar has changed again. So automatically also is, is affecting the housing industry and the construction industry because there is actually nothing called fixed contract again. <laughs> because when you look at it, if you are telling me to have a fixed contract, you're actually saying that this is what I will pay. But the economy globally is extremely very volatile at the moment. So the Ukraine um, crisis and the Russia crisis has, has created pockets of issues across different countries, considering that we have our own challenges as Nigerians or as a country. So that's the way I think it is looking now. All right, look, looking at 2023 now, mm. what are you seeing for residential housing uh, demand? in 2023? Well, I think we still have a lot of gap to be closed up. There's still a huge amount of demand. Yeah, despite the fact that some people are traveling abroad, leaving the country, but those people already have something to, to even be able to afford a ticket or something to go and start up. So, but when you look at it, there's still a huge demand. Um, but I, I think the government needs to do more. One of the things I think would really drive the housing deficit to reduce it is when governments start investing intentionally into infrastructure development, then people can live in different locations. You don't have to cross and live in one particular spot that will, the prices will be too expensive. That way, cost of land is not the same thing everywhere. There are some places that the land cost is very cheap. So when there's infrastructure to those places and people can travel one hour to work, people would rather go and live there and then enjoy their serene lifestyle and living in clustered areas that you're even paying through your nose to even be able to afford that residence. So I think the, the, the game changer is still going to be government investing in intentional investing in infrastructure to open up new cities, new neighborhoods, new towns for people to go and start living in. Because I, I see most of those uh, real estate companies developing, mm. you know, housing estates, you yeah. know, farther, farther, you know, out. out uh, how's the demand for that? Outskirts, yeah, well, yes. I, I, I would say that, you know, some of the things that is driving those outskirts development is pricing, actually. So everybody wants to live in Ikeja, GRA, Ikoyi, Lekki, Phase 1. When you look at your pocket, my pocket cannot afford it. So sometimes I have to go as far as Agbado, Ipechuleki, go towards Festag, My 2, Okoko, just for you to be able to stay where your pocket can fit in. But it's not a bad thing to live in those areas if they are express like the Blue Line Lagos is trying to do now. If they are good transportation system networks, so when you go abroad in the UK, these places, these people, they walk many distances away from, from their house. So, but as much as possible, there's a good connecting system for transport grid. It's, it's going to make it very easy. So when you look at those houses where people are beginning to invest in Bechuleki, for instance, a lot of people are putting in developments there, projects are coming in there, people are moving in there. I think 
For a couple of years now, Bejileke has been the fastest corridor in Africa compared to the investment Lagos State government has put in there, the federal government, estate development, private sector. So the real estate and the construction development in Nigeria is actually private driven. Because the private sector that is doing internal roads in those areas, not that government is doing that, government is focusing on the highways. So as they are doing those things, they are actually opening up more construction, more activities, more, more um, space for development. And obviously, you know, looking at it in a, from a mm. global uh, scale now, we know yeah. obviously all the central bankers, you know, they've raised rates in 2022 and there's still projection that yes. rates are still going to go, go up, up, you know, in 2023. And even, you know, back here, mm -hmm. you know, as long as inflation is high, mm -hmm. we're seeing the central bank here and the MPC looking at raising rates, you know, even more. So uh, when you look at it now, how are the banks, how have the banks, you know, been reacting you know, to players in your industry in 2022. And what are you expecting for 2023? You're talking about cost of credit. Cost of credit is presently very high. So, and um, unfortunately, you can't really blame them because they are into business. But when we look at it as, as an organization or as a group of people practicing in this sector, one of the things we really need government to do is um, to be able to ensure that um, we, 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 we encourage or provide um, opportunity for people to get affordable homes, loans, affordable housing. So because when you look at this cost now, okay, there's something that family owned funds is doing that they can give people for 10%, something like that, to own a house, federal mortgage, but they are not easily accessible. So if I go to the bank now and I have a, I see a house I want to buy, the house is 40 million naira, and I go to the bank and the bank is saying, we will finance this house, but it's 25% for two years. So 25% already is, is high. So, and then between now and me able to even get that done, there's a lot of bottleneck along the line. So the interest rate now is, is actually making ready-made houses difficult to sell. So completed houses now, we have a couple that are empty. It's not as if there's no need for them, but people don't have that ready-made cash to pay full for it. And when they go to the bank, the interest rates are high. There are a couple of bottlenecks to be able to assess those things. So as much as possible, the interest rate bringing it down and then the CBM working on that intentionally would really help. And that's why you see a lot of off-plan in the market now. People are doing off-plan off developments. We also do that. So when you do off-plan development, it gives you the leverage of paying in installments gradually. So actually the developers or the people doing the construction are now serving as the credit giver. We are now the one indirectly borrowing you that facility to do it. And when you do that, most times you don't actually pay up to what the bank is going to charge you. So as much as possible, those are things that the industry is thinking around the box to make it happen. Right. And it's obviously, it's, it's an election year. It's an a election new government year. is going to come government. in. Speculations. <laughs> wow, there are a lot of speculation, but I, I will stay on the side of the positivity. Yeah. I like to be... What would you like to positive. see from the new government? It's strange that none of them is talking about affordable housing. None of them is talking about housing, really. I've seen a lot of their manifestos. Uh, nobody's talking about, we are going to create new towns, we are going to create houses, we are going to fund. I've not seen anybody talk about I may be wrong, but so far with my little listening to someone, nobody's talking about housing. And housing is a major part of um, United Nations Resolution for Humanity Shelter. So if you don't have enough shelter, we, it, it's also an indication of economic growth. So they need to look at it intentionally to say, last year if they've contributed for, if they've set their mark 470 billion or thereabouts to encourage housing, they say, let us do more. What did that 470 billion do? Did, were they able to open new towns? So the new government should actually look into the area of land use, land distribution, land affordability, because the land controls a larger part of the development. Fantastic. Well, it will be interesting to see how it all plays out. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Yeleke Ajiboye, CEO you, of Efficacy Construction. It was great having your perspective. Thank, thank you, you again. Yeah, have a